All right, back on the record in the uh, Simpson matter, Mr. Simpson is again present before the court with his counsel, Mr. Shapiro, Mr. Cochran, Mr. Blazier, Mr. Allman, Mr. Sheck, people represented by Mr. Goldberg and Mr. Darden. The jury is not present. Uh, counsel, with regard to the schedule today, just to refresh your recollections, uh, this afternoon we have to break at 345. One of our jurors has a dentist appointment that uh, the transportation is difficult. The Sheriff's Department has asked that we break at 345 to allow for that juror to be transported to the dentist. Isn't that thrilling to have two sheriff's deputies drag you to the dentist? And what we will do at, uh, we will take a break at 345 for 15 minutes and then at 4 o'clock we will take up the evidentiary issue as to the uh, uh, Chicago telephone calls, that hearing. Uh, we will, t I understand that counsel for Mr. Furman wishes to be heard on the issue of getting copies of the uh, so-called Furman tapes. Uh, I anticipate a representative from the city of Los Angeles will also appear uh, to request from the court uh, copies of those audio tapes and any transcripts that are in existence. Uh, so we'll have those hearings at uh, 4 o'clock. And uh, today is a, uh, and we'll just go until we finish those hearings. All right. With respect to scheduling, uh, I don't expect until the afternoon that we will get to the issue of the SOC but uh, we have the submitted proposed stipulation having to do with uh, what the testimony of counsel would be concerning the SOC examination. And in my letter, I said February 15th is February 16th. Uh, so we have the proposed stipulations uh, about what Mr. Harmon, Mr. Clark, Mr. Blazier, and myself would testify to, which All I right. propose that the court just read to the jury at the appropriate time. That's my proposal. Have you uh, discussed this with Mr. Goldberg? Well, we submitted this memorandum to the court and to counsel yesterday. All I don't right. know what their position is on it. Uh, this is the first time I, I saw it, Your Honor, although Mr. Sheck did mention something about his stipulation to me, and I didn't quite understand what he was saying. I think it was yesterday. All right. When do you anticipate we'll get to the SOC issues, Mr. Sheck? Uh, this afternoon. All right, then, Mr. Goldberg, why don't you take the morning to take a look at it for the lunch hour, and then we'll come back. And before we hit the sock issue, then we'll uh, take it up again. And, Your Honor, how long is the lunch break today? Uh, let's go one hour today. All right, anything else before I have the jury come out? Your Honor, uh, there were several issues that we um, uh, wanted to take up that we did not need to get to. Uh, yesterday for the evidence that was presented in the afternoon. One was as to the question of the SOC, excuse me, the swatch drawing experiment. I don't know whether we need to bring that up now or whether that can be reserved for the afternoon. Maybe Mr. Sheck uh, can let us know about, about that. When do you anticipate Mr. Sheck getting to the SOC drawing experiment? All right, then we'll take it up this afternoon. Oh, Your Honor, okay. could, may I propose uh, we were served with that uh, memo yesterday, so if I could suggest we would like an opportunity to give a written reply and we can take it up Friday morning. All right. I don't have a problem just, with that. Just for the record. It's not like we don't have a lot of things to do. Right. I, I, was, I was saying swatch, not saw. Swatch drawing experiment. We know. No, I understand. Okay. All right. The, the other issue, Your Honor, was that... Um, We've discussed before the, the question of uh, trying to get examination quality photographs of at least the exhibits that council has put on the board. They, they gave us photographs of photographs. Um, I, I, it's not a technical dispute. The problem is, is that when you're looking at tiny little parallel lines and the like and you're trying to decide what is that and where did it come from and, and, and such, it can't really be done with a photo of a photo. So I think the people are entitled to actual photographs and even possibly the negatives, uh, although it's conceivable that the photographs themselves might suffice. All right, and Mr. Goldberg, do you have a specific list of which photos you want? Well, I, I <coughs> wanted actual photographs of everything on the defendant's boards with the 
the only the things that I think I have photographs of now, and I'm not talking about my photographs, the only things of theirs where I think I actually have photographs are the uh, photographs that were taken by Dr. Lee on um, the 25th of June at Bundy and Rockingham. I believe what defense provided me in that regard <coughs> appears to be an actual photograph as opposed to a photo of a photo. Other than that, everything else that I've received from the defense is a photo of a photo. Uh, so, so that's one issue, Your Honor. The, the other issue as to some of the boards is that particularly in the area of the Heron Trace examinations, uh, there are a series of boards that talk about evidence found. We believe that the term evidence is argumentative in that context in the sense that the things that are found are sometimes soil, debris, that, that would so not what have... So what do you propose we call it? Stuff? Uh, hair, hair and trace. Uh, or stuff, if the court prefers. Uh, I, I'd like stuff. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but hair and trace would, would be fine. I mean, that, that is a technical term as opposed to evidence, which, <laughs> which implies that it's something that has a probative evidentiary significance in this case. Because obviously the people will be arguing, as we're entitled to, that these items do not. And I, and I believe from my conversations with Dr. Lee, um, he would agree with that at least as to many, if not most, uh, of these items. So we do feel that the term evidence is, is a loaded concept and an argumentative one. I think the doctor's testimony will make it clear that this, this term Do you really find yourself compelled to argue this? No. Yeah. All right. That objection as to the use of the word evidence on the boards is overruled. It's not an inappropriate phrase in the context of this case. All right. As to the uh, Mr. Sheck, as excuse me, Mr. Goldberg, would you uh, prepare a list of the items, the actual photographs keyed to the exhibits, so I know specifically which photos you want produced? Because I agree with you that if you're going to have your own expert do re-comparisons of items you need to have an actual photograph. But I need to have a specific list for any order that I issue. All right, so if you'll submit that to the court, and time is of the essence because if they're photographs that have to be re reproduced from negatives, obviously that'll take some time. All right. All right, Deputy uh, Magnero, let's have the jurors, please. All right, let the record reflect that we've been rejoined by all the members of our jury panel. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Dr. Lee, would you resume the witness stand, please? All right, let the record reflect that Dr. Henry Lee is again on the witness stand, undergoing direct examination by Mr. Sheck on behalf of the defendant. Uh, good morning again, Dr. Lee. Good morning. Uh, doctor, you are reminded, sir, that you were still under oath, and Mr. Sheck, you may continue with your direct examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, Dr. Lee, we were uh, talking yesterday about imprint evidence at Bundy, and we had discussed uh, first the board concerning the walkway. Second, uh, the board concerning the pieces of paper. And now I'd like to turn our attention to a third board dealing with Mr. Goldman's genes. Mark this board yet? All right, thirteen thirty nine.
Are there any remains on this matter? Sorry? Any remains? No. no. All right, Mr. Bancroft, may I see this, please? Thank you. Mr. Sheck. Uh, Dr. Lee, if you could come down from the witness stand. And Dr. Lee, on February 19th, uh, I believe a little over a month or so into this trial, did you have an opportunity to examine uh, Mr. Goldman's genes? Yes, sir. And uh, could you describe using the photograph on the far left-hand side uh, the blood spatter patterns that you found? The first picture on the left hand side appears to depict an overall view of the front portion of the blue jean of Mr. Gold. What we view in now is flat. The blue jean put on the appear to be on the piece of paper. By no means what I'm trying to say this is a three-dimensional setting or somebody wear a blue jean like this. That only shows a two-dimensional setting. On the left-hand side, we see large amount of blood span. Covers from the top and downwards. In between, there are a couple area we see the bald area. In addition, we see blood spatter, like pan. Other could be bloody imprint. However, when a large amount of blood cover the surface, those difficult to see and uh, very difficult to determine what type of evidence. However, on the right hand side, the amount of blood is much less than the left hand side. On the waistband area, we have a large blood pattern. In the lower leg area, we do see large amount of blood pattern. In addition, some blood drops blood spatters, but this middle portion appear to have a lot of imprint type of pattern. This is a black and white picture. It's not a color picture. The real color picture of this, the blue, this gene supposed to look like blue gene. By the way, it's a Levi type of blue gene. The black area is consistent with reddish color like stain. Uh, Dr. Lee, and the reason that you have put these up in black and white is what? I'm not sure this is my picture or the picture stay provided to me. It's a black and white picture. It shows the pattern. Now, Dr. Lee, have you been able to identify three areas of imprints that are of interest here that are depicted on the board? Yes, well, sir. It calls for a conclusion as to whether they're for a sustained interest. foundation. All right. Uh, could you, do you have a, a red tape with you? No. I don't have red tape. You I don't have a red marker. Well, the, the, I'm talking about the red line tape. I don't have that. Oh. <laughs> used to be on the tables anyway. Be looking for Mr. Shea. He had a uh, sort of red twine. Twine. Uh, well, let me turn your attention first uh, to imprint, what is labeled imprint one. Uh, could you please uh, indicate for us uh, perhaps on the photograph, the larger photograph, where imprint one is. And uh, Your Honor, the record should reflect that we have uh, created plastic overlays 
around each of these pictures so that uh, Dr. Lee can draw on the plastic overlays. All right, America should also reflect that this exhibit 1339 is comprised of four photographs. One photograph uh, is marked blue jeans, and the remaining uh, three are imprint one, two, and three. Proceed. Yes, sir. Imprint number one is located in this area. Could you just put a, a one to the left of that arrow? Thank you. The landmark of this, we see three consecutive drop, drops. Here's the three consecutive drops. That's the only area on this side of blue jean shows this landmark path. One, two, three. One, two, three. We see a imprint like pattern on the top right corner, which is here. We see a imprint pattern consistent with a linear tiger pattern in the middle portion, which in this location. Then we see additional pattern like two V's, which located in here. So imprint number one is the lower right side of the lake area of this region. Now when you talk about the V patterns, what kind of patterns are those? When I talk about V pattern, could, this, you, could you put V's top of those arrows? This V pattern could cause by so-called according effect. When the blue jean crunched up, the pants or shirt crunched up, some blood transfer onto this crunched area. Later, when you smooth it out, the exposed area going to have blood transfer. Unexposed area, exposed area, have a bump. Now it looks like a V. Actually, I like to play accordion. When folding, transfer, when you stretch down, you see this pattern. So which indicative, this portion of blue jean probably crunched up a little bit. And uh, we see two Vs. If we see a multiple Vs, that's crunched up a lot. Is there blood dripping patterns here? In this location, we see blood dripping. Could you please mark that uh, BD? Now, do you see, Dr. Lee, in imprint area number one, parallel line imprint patterns? I see some parallel line consistent with imprint. Could you please indicate where that is? And could you mark below the arrow uh, why don't we call it P P L P parallel line imprint pattern? What 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 you think is appropriate? You're the lawyer. I'm a scientist. <laughs> L P. Is there anything else that we should discuss about imprint uh, number one? Here have another imprint which I cannot tell, but it's not the parallel line. Right. You want to, how would you like to label that question mark or? Or attorney, tell me you, you want to allow me what, what do you think is the most scientifically appropriate term? All right. Imprint was a question. Uh, moving now to 
imprint number two. Imprint number two. Again, we see some according effect. In addition, we see a pretty clear imprint on the Yavanda board on my right hand lower corner, this location. In the center of this location. It appears to be, have some parallel line. So would, could you label that circle pattern PLP again? And could you show us where on Mr. Goldman's jeans on the right pant leg that would be? Could you put a two near that arrow? Okay. Now, Dr. Lee, with respect to imprint area number two, is the parallel line pattern that you've circled there consistent with a partial shoe print? I cannot definitively say that's definitely a shoe print. It could be. Now let's, is there anything else we should note about this area before turning to imprint number three? No. Now I'd ask you to turn to uh, imprint area number three. Imprint pattern number three. <coughs> Here appear to have a time. Again, looks like a block, a group of blocks. <laughs> But uh, very difficult to say whether or not this is a shoe print or not, just like any other imprint pattern. I noticed some imprint pattern. At this point in time, I exam the blue jean flat, a two-dimensional examination, which not really represent three-dimensional settings. Very difficult for any scientist to go back mentally reconstruct the blue gene in a three-dimensional setting. All I'm coming here today to report to you they are imprint evidence on the blue gene. There are other imprint evidence in this location appear to be have some parallel law. You're marking those PLP? And this group of uh, parallel lines appear to be applied on top of each other on multiple applications. How that happened, the simple explanation. No question pending, Your Honor. All right. So you're indicating here that this parallel line pattern on imprint number three, that there are a series of them on top of each other. It appears to be. All right. Can you, uh, what mechanism, well, let me put it, let me ask this. Is this consistent with multiple contacts from whatever it is that is making the parallel line pattern impression, a parallel line imprint? An imprint is created by an object with a certain design. It's a sort of a, like a replica. If this is a stamp, if I stamp on it, it's going to cause an imprint. You have a multiple imprint on top of each other, which could suggest have a multiple contact. If the mechanism that caused this imprint was a shoe, is this consistent with partial shoe impressions kicking multiple times in that area? If is a shoe, and which suggests it could be a multiple contact by the same type of a design. 
parallel to this. If this were, if this parallel line imprint comes from a shoe, could it be the Bruno Magli shoe? No. It would be some other shoe. If this is a shoe print, this is a different type of design than Bruno Magli. Now these are partial imprint patterns? Yes, sir. Are they all consistent with being in blood? Yes, sir. Are they against the grain of the fabric? Yes. Do these parallel line imprint patterns, they are not caused by folding of the fabric? No. In other words, the accordion effect comes from the folding of the fabric, but these parallel line imprints do not. Does not. The ones you've located, you've indicated, are on uh, the right leg. Right. All right. Now, as I understand your testimony, the left leg in the area that is covered more with blood, one cannot see such patterns. I cannot tell any pattern. Just cover such with blood. I don't think anyone can come here and say they can see pattern through the blood. Mm -hmm. Are these parallel line imprint patterns that you've identified for us, they're on different locations and come from different directions? Yes, sir. Your Honor, may I request at this time, uh, did we put in, could you please identify where imprint pattern number three is? In this area. Your Honor, since this board is such that I think one requires study, may I request that the jury be allowed to come up and look at each of these uh, markings now? All right, let me have counsel take a seat. All right, Deputy Jacks, I think we ne may need to uh, open the uh, door here. Side door. All right, and we'll start with 1386. As soon as Deputy Jacks will come down around.
reflect that each one of our jury members has had the opportunity to carefully examine uh, Defense Exhibit 1339. Mr. Sheck. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Doctor, we'd like to go back for a moment to what I believe is 1337. First of all, Dr. Lee, I think that uh, trying to complete uh, yesterday's testimony, we neglected to uh, draw circles around uh, the imprints that you described yesterday on the piece of paper and the envelope, uh, the piece of paper being marked 1338A and the envelope being marked 1338B. Could you please uh, do so? <coughs> And maybe uh, could we mark that? Would it be accurate to mark that as PLP parallel line pattern? All right, Dr. Lee's placed a uh, blue semicircle on 1338A. Ask you to do the same thing with respect to 1338B. All right, and the witness has complied. Now, Dr. Lee, with respect to both 1338A and 1338B, uh, I'd ask that first 1338A, is this parallel line imprint pattern consistent with having been made in blood? Yes. So that means whatever caused this imprint ha had blood on it or stepped on blood, how does that work? Speculation, Your Honor. Overall. The parallel line, as I explained a minute ago, represents an object. An object <coughs> has certain structure, pattern. This just a replicate when this object, surface design, have some blood. Transfer. Have a physical contact, a direct contact with this portion of the paper. A stationary contact. If a movement, we want to see smear, the contact. Cause this transfer. However, subsequently, some other blood stand got on top of this. So, covers a portion of this path. Therefore, difficult to see it. Now, I'd just like to take 1338A and I'll walk from the right to the jury box to the left and slowly display that at court permission. Proceed. Mr. Douglas, would you give us Dr. Lee our short pointer there since it's a little more visible? Thank you. Sure. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And may I do the same thing briefly with 1338B? Yes, you may.
yesterday you drew uh, circles around patterns on 1337A and 1337B. Yes, sir. Uh, perhaps for consistency's sake, first on uh, 1337B, would it be accurate to mark this one as a PLT as well? Yes. <clears throat> And 1337A, would it be accurate to mark that as PLP? And would you say that that is, in fact, a shoe print? Yes, sir. So let's mark that PLP and then underneath it write shoe print. Now, with respect to 1337A and 1337B, are the parallel line patterns here consistent with having been made in blood? Yes. All right, Your Honor, may I again slowly display these? Although I seem to recollect we did that yesterday with those. But we go ahead. We just held them up, but I don't think we... Go ahead. Could, on 1337, there are, there's a diagram of the Bundy area and some uh, uh, dots on it. <laughs> Could you uh, draw lines between these pictures indicating where all of uh, them are located with respect to those dots? Yes. Extremely left corner one. It's a locator number 10 tile. The middle one located between fifth and sixth tile. The envelope is approximately in this location. The piece of paper is on the lower level walkway. The blue jean located approximately this location. This a limit pattern here is somewhere along the walkway. And incidentally, Dr. Lee, with respect to the uh, parallel line imprint pattern that you identified for us uh, on this uh, June 12th, June 13th walkway photograph, in theory, is it possible that that imprint pattern could arise from an imperfection in the tile? It could be because I only look at a picture. I myself did not have an opportunity to go there, identify the tile. It could be anything. 
what the, I don't want to mislead people. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, say that's a shoe print. By no means, I did not say that's a shoe print. Just a partial imprint with some parallel line. You say that, so with respect to, I guess, all the imprint patterns, other than uh, what I think we've marked as the lower right-hand photograph on 1337 and a larger photograph that we've called 1337A, you cannot definitively uh, call these parallel line imprint patterns, with that exception, a shoe print. Is that correct? That's correct. However, are these parallel line imprint patterns consistent with coming from the Bruno Magli? No. Mr. Goldman's boot? No. Could they come from Mr. Goldman's jeans? No. Could they come from Mr. Goldman's shirt? Inconsistent. All right. Could it come from a lip print? No, it's not that lip print. An ear print? Your ear, no. All right, I'm loath to say it. Nose print? No. Right. Not be it. This is inconsistent with a nose print either. However, these parallel line imprint patterns are consistent with having come from a shoe. Good time. Now, Dr. Lee, if we assume that these parallel line imprint patterns come from a shoe, I, I think you've told us they are not consistent with the Bruno Magli or Mr. Goldman shoe, correct? Yes. Would that mean that it, assuming it's a shoe print, it came from another person? Cause for speculation, Your Honor, improper hypothetical sustained. Dr. Lee, in your experience at crime scenes, have you ever seen a single assailant wear two pairs of shoes? Argument with your mind. Oh. No. I think we're finished with these sports now. All right, Mr. Harris. Let me ask counsel to have a seat, please. Now, Dr. Lee, you were discussing with us in the course of your description of uh, the imprint pattern evidence, different kinds of bloodstained patterns. Is that correct? I'm confused by question. Can you uh, sure. uh, rephrase that, please? Th there's a, a discipline of analysis known as bloodstained spatter or splatter interpretation? Blood stamp pattern analysis, right. yes. And you were making reference in your testimony so far to certain kind of blood stain patterns? Yes, sir. All right. And are there different kinds of patterns that an expert in this area can identify? You mean blood stamp pattern? That's correct. Yes. All right. Is there a way that you can demonstrate for us by the use of paper and ink the different kinds of blood stain patterns that you've already discussed and you would discuss in our examination of further evidence in this case? Yes. Your Honor, at this time I would ask permission to, with a bottle of red ink and paper, have Dr. Lee demonstrate different kinds of blood stain patterns. <clears throat> oh, well. What I would suggest, Your Honor, is that we have some 
paper. May I consult with Dr. Lee as to which is the best form of paper to just work with one? Uh, some red ink. And what I would suggest is that permission to take the ink, the paper, and using this. All right, we need to have Dr. Lee examine the papers to see which ones he right. feels is appropriate first. Mr. Sheck, and Dr. Lee, you can step down, but if you would, because you will have your back to the court reporter, if you'd keep your voice up, please. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. All right, it appears that uh, Dr. Lee has a stack of uh, what appears to be white cot cotton fiber paper and various inks. What what kind of paper is this, Dr. Lee? Just 25% cotton. Dr. Lee, with the use of the red ink in the paper, um, can you demonstrate for us uh, blood stain patterns? Yes. Uh, the blood circulating in our body system in a constant speed depends on capillary, then or artery, we have a different speed. Artery circulating faster than the vein, the vein circulating faster than the capital. This circulation system. It's not in response to the question. Do you want to have him explain the blood system and how it impacts yes. blood in, patterns? As a predicate for explaining blood stain patterns, could you explain for us uh, briefly, something about the circulatory system as it relates to how blood comes out of the body. Yes. In this closed circulation system, carry the oxygen nutrient through the body. That's why we can function. Once this system interrupt, the blood will come up. Depends which part of the body. If an artery, the blood will gushing, so-called arterial spurting, arterial gushing. If a vein was cut, the blood will rush out. If it's just a capillary cut, the blood will dripping out. Once it's come out of our body, we cannot take it back anymore. We cannot control anymore. The environment and the physics takes it over. It no longer can be controlled by an individual. Once the blood comes out, we'll deposit to a surface. The surface usually is the lowest surface, whatever lowest surface. For example, here, that's if I drip in the blood or ink onto this surface. That's the lowest surface. If I drip here, the carpet going to be lowest surface. And stop on the surface according to the physics, the gravity. Could you demonstrate for the jury, for example, you mentioned a drop, what is known as a low velocity Drop. Yes.
if the blood come out without any force, just drip it. Going to form certain patterns. This pattern generally we consider a low velocity blood drop. Right. The record should reflect that Dr. Lee has taken a, uh, a bottle of, out of a bottle of red ink, a, uh, a dropper. I'm sorry? An eyedropper or and dropped it directly down onto a piece of paper. And uh, how would you like to label this one, Dr. Lee? Maybe you should use a uh, low velocity so. drops. Just low velocity You just create some blood smear. <laughs> I, I smeared the paper and I created blood smear on, the, on one piece of paper. Dr. Lee, is this uh, actually ink that you're using? Ink, actually. All right, thank you. Regular knowledge. Probably I should put some paper underneath. Now, on this low velocity drop, uh, the way you did it, it was vertical? is directly perpendicular to the surface, a 90 degree drop. Now, if one were to measure the diameter of those drops, could this be correlated with the source of it to the target? In general, we can do an estimation we have to know the substratum. Is this paper, carpet, pavement, or wood? Each substratum surface will have different effect. You cannot use the paper to compare a carpet, or use the carpet to compare a pavement. Therefore, you have to know the drop size, how big a drop, and uh, have to know the substrate. Sometimes we can make some correlation. We cannot make a say exact determination how high. But can one make a reasonable approximation in certain instances by measuring the diameter of a vertical drop such as this with respect to where the source was? If we know every parameters then we can make a reasonable interpretation. Is it therefore important when documenting, preserving evidence at a crime scene to make an effort to document the size of drops? Yes, we generally conduct such documentation. And the photographs taken in this case of the blood stain evidence at the Bundy and Rockingham scenes, did they contain rulers in them so that such measurements could be made? I did not have opportunity to see every photograph. I cannot tell you. The photograph, what the eye exam, I did not see rulers. Mm -hmm. Now, on these motion strike. Go on. Now, with respect to this uh, low velocity drop, are there something known as jagged edges and satellite spatter? Yes. If you look at the periphery area, you see this jagged edge and small spatter around this main group. Those called satellite path. Now is there something known as angular deposits at low velocity. Well, before we go, 
Or is there some, before we discuss yes. angular deposits, is there another point you think should be made we so should we can understand made. it? Or yes. Oh, ask a question. Council just asking me. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ask a question, Mr. Chair. Right. Uh, Dr. Lee, could you please continue your description of. That's not a question. All right. I <laughs> That's a direct. Before we discuss the issue of angular deposits, is there a principle that uh, we should appreciate? Yes. What is that? This diameter, say, sometimes give us some information. How big a drop? What the possible estimation of distance by correlation of a known testing, such as, let's say, Assume everything equal. We use the paper. If I let the drop down in about three inches, second one, six inches, keep increase the distance. You see the diameter varies. When I increase the distance, but to a limit, doesn't matter how I increase the distance, will not increase the diameter. That reach the terminal velocity. So this piece otherwise. If I climb up a tall building, such as Empire State Building, drop a drop of ink, it will cover the whole Manhattan because this relationship, it's not, it's not going to happen this way, only to a certain distance. That's why this correlation, you just change the pattern. Let the record reflect first that Dr. Lee took the eyedropper and dropped a series of drops, as he indicated, at different heights uh, on this piece of paper and causing circles of different size as he went upwards, increasingly larger. And uh, when I took the paper to move it and show it to the other jurors, I turned it a little and it caused some of those drops to move. But if you had Doctor. asked for my permission, I would have encouraged you to wait till it dried a little. Thank you, Your Honor, and I should have done that. And you're right. Could, Dr. Lee, how would we mark this piece of paper? Uh, drop size. Drop size. A low velocity. Drop size, low velocity. Are we now ready to discuss angular deposits? Yes. Could you please describe for us what uh, an angular deposit is, low velocity? What so far are we talking about? The receiving surface is flat, horizontal. But in a three-dimensional setting, a room or scene, you have vertical surface. For example, the wall. You have inclining surface in an angle. A drop of blood deposit on a vertical surface, a wall, or inclining surface will have a different pattern than what I just had a minute ago I demonstrated. Those called angular deposits. If the source of this liquid almost parallel to the receiving surface. When I drop, you form a specific pattern. If I vary this surface angle a little bit, <coughs> it change the shape.
finally become 90 degree receiving surface, it will become a circular pattern. Any juror in the back row who thinks they need to stand up to view any of these things, feel free to do so. All right, 165, can you see that? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. How should we label uh, this one? Angular deposit. Low velocity? Yes. <coughs> Your Honor, when we finish with these, we'll put numbers on all of them. Yeah, Mr. Sheck, 1030. I'm sorry? 1030. 1030. So it would be fair to say that the impact angle can be determined to some extent by the width and length of the bloodstain pattern. Yes. If one were to measure the width and length of the bloodstain pattern, yes. Can that give useful information to do a reconstruction as to the source? Yes, we can determine the possible angle of deposit. And is that something that ought to be done when properly processing a crime scene? I usually, if a blood pattern becomes crucial, we document. Now, is there something known as medium velocity? Yes. All right. And could you describe that for us? A medium velocity involving certain force. Could be an internal force, the blood pressure, or an external force. For example, a person swing a hand, swing a bat, a weapon. Those encompass a large group of a blood stain pattern we call medium velocity blood stain pattern. And uh, can one determine direction or position from this? Sometimes, yes, we can go back, reconstruct the possible direction of impact, can project it back, say, the possible source, the location of the blood source. Can you demonstrate for us, uh, for example, what is impact spatter? Well, first, let's move. Can you demonstrate for us medium velocity uh, yes. drops? A medium velocity, as I indicates, quite a few different types. The simplest type we usually see at the scene, that's a medium velocity pattern. A medium velocity pattern give you a direction. It usually consists several a trail. When this force increases, the spot getting smaller. Now you this also consistent with a medium velocity cast off pattern. Sometimes we can look at uh, how many trails at the scene determine how many blue or possibly what was lift up and down by looking at the ceiling, look at the wall. Sustain, ask another question. Perhaps we could take this first piece of paper and we'll mark it medium velocity one and the second medium velocity two and would it be fair to say that increased velocity smaller yes 
pattern? Yes. All right, Mr. Sheck, I'm going to direct that we mark all of these blood uh, spatter or rob demonstration papers as Defense Exhibit 1340, A through whatever. And what I would like for you to do uh, at the conclusion of the court day, present to Mrs. Robertson a uh, key, 1340A through B, and then a key as to what it is Yes. for the record, with a copy to the uh, prosecution. Is there any other pattern with respect to medium velocity that you think we should demonstrate to understand bloodstain patterns? Impact spatter. What is impact spatter? Impact spatter, if you have some liquid blood in a surface, a force direct applied to the surface can cause a splash pattern or projected pattern, and all of those patterns are considered medium velocity spatter pattern. Mm -hmm. Can you demonstrate one for us? Uh, you're making juror 63 awfully nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I feel very reluctant to do that. You have to haul it. Can you see it? Or maybe like this. Mr. Goldberg, if you want to stand up and move away, you're welcome to do so. Uh, I'm the one that's going to pay for this suit, I think. <laughs> You have, say, a couple of drop of blood on the surface. If a force applied to this surface, you're going to have certain so-called medium <coughs> velocity pattern. Yeah, I've got them right here. We just ruined the pattern. No, no. Simple. Have some. That's a medium velocity pattern. It's a projected pattern. I'm going to write on this exhibit. Is that still a viable pattern given Dr. Lee's comment? Let me ask. Dr. Lee, would you examine that? And is that a in general, still. Okay. Actually, medium velocity impact pattern? Project. Medium velocity. And what do you want to say? Projected. Pattern. Pro projected pattern. Mr. Sheck, are we going to go much further in this demonstration? Uh, I think we'll finish it exactly the break. No, I'm. I'm have you ever been to a Gallagher show? <laughs> <laughs> I ha doesn't he use more props? Or, uh? <laughs> well, we're getting close. Okay. All right. I'm, I mean, I'm just concerned about the proximity. Yes. This is a medium velocity impact. This. This one as well. This is a have some medium velocity <coughs> pattern, also input. Right. Okay. This time, going to object any further demonstrations as being irrelevant. Oh. Now, you've had me. This is this piece of paper. You put your fingers on after you slammed the table. Yes. Could you please? And you are characterizing this as a medium velocity pattern and imprint. Could you please explain that to the jury? Those are direct contact imprints. However, on the paper, <coughs> some small spatter also deposit on this piece of paper. So here, you have a combination of two patterns. An experienced examiner can look at this pattern, determine the sequence, which one apply first, the imprint or a spatter. 
So we'll label this combination imprint span. Now, would it be fair to say that what, what is a compression? A compression, which I just demonstrate, have some blood like material directly contact the surface, we say energy or force, without letter movement. That's a compression. Paper you have there a compression? Yes. If this compression with a movement not become a smear. This is a compression, this is a smear. Both have to have surface contact. I'm going to label the pattern that is compression. The other one is smear. Is that accurate? Yes. Now, is there something known as a mirror image? Yes. Could you please demonstrate what that is? If you have one surface, have some wet blood, the next surface have a contact, you have a mirror image. If this surface against another surface, now we have a wet transfer. Let's mark the paper that is I've marked mirror image. The record should reflect is the paper that Dr. Lee dropped blood on and then folded, creating the mirror image. And then the piece of paper where he then took the mirror image pattern and placed it on another piece of paper, that one should be called wet Electronics. transfer. Dr. Lee, what is a wipe and what is a swipe? <laughs> if a surface have some liquid, blood, ketchup, or anything, if a person use a kitchen towel, or a person's clothes, contact and wipe it, that's called wipe. Now this surface have some transfer, if touch a clean surface, now this become a swipe. Wipe and swipe. Both are transfer pattern, but different, which the experienced examiner can tell if they see which one is which. Let's mark <coughs> wipe and swipe. Wipe. The wipe is when the blood is there, a surface touch that, brushed over, and that's called wipe. And the swipe? Swipe is another surface, for example, my clothing have some blood touch a clean surface, that's a swipe. Could you describe for us what are known as contact patterns? Uh, the, which we already indicate a contact pattern can be any surface with some 
a amount of a liquid, finger, shoes, ear, nose, body, touch a surface, and cause a direct transfer that's called a contact pattern. If this bottle touch surface leave a pattern that's a contact transfer pattern. Would you call that a stationary contact? Yes. So how would you suggest we label this? Stationary contact. Stationary contact. Is there such a thing as dynamic contact? A dynamic contact is with a movement. Contact with a movement. Now you have a pattern. with a movement pattern. This movement can cause the deposit surface, receiving surface, can be both move or one surface move, and we can tell the direction of this movement. Label this dynamic, dynamic contact with movement. Dr. Lee, are there any other blood stain patterns uh, that we should believe we should demonstrate to understand your testimony about that we're going to be uh, discussing about blood stain evidence at the crime scene? There are many other patterns, however, some pattern uh, not totally relevant, say, such as high velocity blood spatter pattern that's due to gunshot or some pattern which is difficult to demonstrate arterial spur, arterial gushing, which I really don't want to do here. To do here. <laughs> All right. Your Honor, I think this would be. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our uh, mid-morning recess. Remember all my admonitions to you. We'll stand in recess for 15 minutes. Dr. Lee, you can step down. Notice the whispering is getting a little loud. Mr. Newfield being the primary offender in this. <laughs> I know, but he's still he's still the primary offender because when I can hear counsel talking, and I heard it from both ends. All right, you guys have plenty of post-it notes. You can pass notes if you need to converse with each other. Go back to counsel table. But if you're within standing and near the rail, you're not to speak to each other. All right. All right, let's have the jurors, please. Hold on. Hold on. Got enough water there, Dr. Lee? All right, are we done with the Gallagher show? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sheck? Yes. All right. All right, did, did you, uh, I need a catalog of what each one of those things are. All right. Probably the elevators. All right, Deputy Magnar, let's have the jurors, please.
should I say Tom Sharp and Lee Dick? Which board are you going to? Closed in Yeah, why don't you go ahead? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. All right, let the record reflect that we've been rejoined by all the members of our jury panel. Dr. Henry Lee is again on the witness stand, still undergoing direct examination by Mr. Sheck. And Mr. Sheck, you've placed another board on the uh, yes on the easel, and this does reflect, has one photograph that reflects remains. So uh, I'm going to direct Mr. Bancroft to avoid this board. I, no, I don't think it does. It does. It does. All right, avoid that, Mr. Bancroft. All right, proceed. And do you want to mark this yes. as next in order? This would be defense 1341. Uh, Mrs. Robertson. All right, 1341. Proceed. Uh, Dr. Lee, uh, call your attention now to a board that we've marked 1341 entitled Bloodstain from Closed in Area of Bundy. Uh, with the court's permission, may Dr. Lee yes, he may. Uh, get off the witness stand and uh, with the aid of a pointer or whatever else you want to use, Dr. Lee? All right, Mr. Bancroft, the uh, remains are in the bottom Right hand row. photo. You can, if you can catch the top two rows, you can do those. Do not go to the bottom row. Do you understand, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Sheck. Now, Dr. Lee, <clears throat> uh, what does the center picture in this board uh, depict? The center picture, second row, second line, second column, second row, this depicts an overall view of a corner of a fenced in area at the bounding seat. And Dr. Lee, are there recognizable blood spatter patterns that are highlighted in the peripheral pictures on this board? Yes. Now, are, whose pictures are these? Those are the pictures supplied to me by Attorney Shapiro. So these are from, to the best of your knowledge, the prosecution? Yes, sir. Uh, and with respect to these bloodstained patterns, uh, there are no rulers in this, these pictures so that we can measure any of these uh, deposits. Uh, I did not see any. Now, I ask that uh, this photograph be marked as 1341A. A. And what is that? This appear to be a copy. This appear to be copy of this one. So 1341A is the original from which a print was made that is the center picture on the uh, the board 1341. I don't think it's an original probably a copy of another one. Right. But it's an, an earlier generation. Yes. Okay. Now, you don't talk about it. now, let me call your attention first 
to the upper left hand corner. Could you, uh, do you recognize that's the one that has the photo card number 119? Uh, 109. Now this one, that's 119. 119. And what does that represent? This appeared to be to peak a location of the fence near the gate area. And could you point out on the center picture the, the direction that would be? Appear to be this location. So that's the front gate area? Yes. And what is that bloodstain pattern? Those are considered as medium velocity cast off pattern. And what, if anything, can you determine from that pattern with respect to the blood source? In this location, it depicts a group of blood stand. However, this picture is slightly out of focus because this is a cylindrical surface. It's not the photographer's first fault because the surface have a coverage. So certain area in focus, certain area out of focus. However, this group of stands shows a direction consistent with from, if I face the picture, left to right. This appear to be, indicates a location about approximately three feet, uh, two inches high from the ground which means the blood source has to be at least that high, which again indicates the source has to be in a vertical position. Mm -hmm. Now, photo number 119, uh, that would be uh, item number 54 on LAPD item numbers as recorded in this case? I don't know. Well, is it, when you say three foot, two inches up, you're referring to the measurements recorded by Mr. Fung. Yes. So in other words, he recorded these bloodstain items as being three feet, two inches above, uh, on, up on this pole. I assume, I don't know which drop, I assume in general location. That's why I said approximate. <coughs> now, what does this indicate? This, would you characterize this as horizontal cast off pattern? It's consistent with. And what would that indicate uh, about the blood? If this, the source of this blood were a person, would that be consistent with somebody being standing upright? Yes. Uh, do you know whose blood that is, or is there any typing indicating whose blood that is, to your knowledge? I don't know. Now. Which uh, picture would you like to move to next in terms of indicating bloodstain patterns? We can finish. Please proceed. Uh, column number one. The next photograph going to be the second picture of column one. This picture depicts a variety of bloodstain pattern. The first group I noticed is in the center post, which correlate to this location. At the center post, I can see a contact transfer pattern, smear pattern, additional contact transfer pattern, and some dripping pattern on this one area. Now, is what does that indicate uh, with respect to well, what, what determinations can you make as to the blood source from that? Which indicative either somebody's clothing or body or surface have a direct contact of this location, cause a transfer, and sub subsequently have another contact. At the same time, I see some blood dripping which means have liquid blood flow downwards. So just from that pole, 
from the two contacts mirrors made at different times? Could be different time, could be same time. And blood dripping down? Yes. What other blood stain pattern do you see in that photograph? This area depicts the back portion of this metal gate. If we start counting this as column one, two, three, four, I can see star number five, six, seven, and eight have a variety of pattern. We see a contact, we see a smear, we see some swiping pattern, wiping pattern, we see angular deposit, we see vertical driplet, a variety of different pattern appear on this location. Can we tell anything about the source of that from these photographs? Those angular deposits, those drop has to be above the surface, have a vertical direction. How high, I cannot tell you, but has to be above. This contact, which means have a direct transfer. And smear on different location means movement. Movement meaning multiple contact. Multiple contact with a dynamic movement, either a wipe or swipe type of fashion. If we could have done measurements, or if measurements had been taken of these bloodstain patterns, would that be more useful information in doing a more complete reconstruction of what occurred and when? Assume facts not in evidence that any reconstruction is sustained. Crazy question. If measurements had been made at the scene, could that give additional information that could assist in making further determinations as to the source of the blood? Speculation is vague. Oral. If with measurement and uh, clear documentation, maybe we can do some further limit reconstruction. Uh, you indicated you were going to move now to the, and uh, this is a word, the bottom left hand photograph on yes. this board. Yes. This is a close up view depict the column one, two, three, four, <coughs> five, four and fifth this location with a number play 101 which depicts a beeper-like object. In addition, on the surface, we see transfer pattern wiping, swiping, and dripping. On the ground, I see patterns consistent with a <coughs> vertical driplet. Mm -hmm. Now, that beeper, would that be consistent with The beeper being kicked under that pole? Well, it's possible. It's sustained. Well, in terms of the soil surface there, would you expect that if uh, the beeper, if dropped from a height, to bounce? False speculation. Oh, well. No foundation for sustained. All right. Are you, have you, you've been to this, the Bundy crime scene? Uh, I only visit the scene, as I indicated yesterday, a brief inspection on June 25th. I did not visit the original scene. But you did see the dirt in that closed in area? Yes. Oh. And from what you see, would you expect a beeper dropped from some height to bounce on that soil? No foundation speculation. Sustained. Anything else with respect to blood stain patterns uh, on this photograph of interest? On the ground, on the leaves and the soil, I see multiple drops. Those are consistent with a low velocity <coughs> blood drops, which indicative the blood source has to be above this area and dripping onto the soil surface. 
Would you move now to the picture in the middle of the top row? The middle of the top row have a number plate 109, which depicts a close-up view showing the back metal fence between the fifth, sixth, and seventh, this area. Uh, this photograph is a much better picture which we can look at a pattern and uh, shows much more detail compared to the previous one. Have a contact, direct contact transfer. Have a transfer smear, another dynamic transfer and dripping pattern further con contact pattern, angular deposit, a row of three, here have more drops, and in addition, on the ground and the leaf material, we see multiple drops. Could that, those drops be from more than one source? Speculation. Sustain. All right. Is there any way from looking at that photograph <coughs> determining how many individuals contributed to those blood stain patterns? No foundation. Oh. I cannot make such determination how many person contribute those blood drops. But can you say something with respect to whether or not a source of those blood drops was upright in that area? Assume very, those. Very no Assume those are vertical droplet, which is consistent with vertical droplet. Has to be from a certain high, from one location to another location. And again, if we could measure, we had measurements of the diameters, we could, we, if one had, would measurements assist, if they existed, in being able to determine the height from which uh, uh, of the blood source? We can estimate from multiple drop, we can maybe estimate a possible high. Is the data available for you to make those kinds of estimations here? No. Uh, would you, would the next, uh, picture you would discuss the one on the upper far right hand corner of this board. The third column. Third picture. First picture of the third column. This picture depicts the reverse side of this same metal fence. Other side. This would be from the Salinger property looking into the closed in area. I Salinger property. The, the property next door. Salinger's a rock in the area. Oh, my, my apologies. The, 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 this would be the closed in area. This would be the building to uh, north. north of 875 South Bundy. Which appears to be. All right. Could you describe for us the bloodstain patterns here? Here, besides this long contact, pattern shows the other side, also this contact pattern start dripping, which indicative a quantity of blood depositing the surface, still wet, running along this curvature surface and come downwards. Large amount of a blood pool is underneath here, form a trail in this location. Here is another good example of an angular deposit shows in that column, which indicative that drop of blood hit this column in a very acute angle. Would that blood stain pattern be consistent with a source being upright? Yes. Multiple contacts with that area? This blood drop, no. 
of the pattern. The totality total pattern. of pattern, which may indicate a multiple deposit. Uh, moving down to the middle, bit, the right hand picture, right far right hand side of the middle row. Yes. Could you describe the bloodstain patterns here? This picture depicts a close up view showing the column on the front, the number eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number eight column. That consistent swipe, contact, and movement, which indicative in this column area have some direct contact and cause those transfer. Incidentally, on the the photograph in the uh, the middle of the top row, the picture has an evidence card indicating 109. 109. Does that is the positioning of that card blocking a view of the bloodstain pattern? Uh, in this particular photo, yes. But there are other photos, no. With respect to the, well, the, the, the card number labeled 108, does that obscure a pole? Well, it's the color next to it appear to be some blood-like stem, which I cannot report to you exactly pattern what it is. Here also have some reddish color stem, and again, I cannot really report to you what kind of pattern. However, this stem on the lower portion shows an angular deposit, vertical downwards hit this location in an angle. Now, Dr. Lee, this photograph that's been labeled photo ID number by LAPD 108, that's in a different section of the closed-in area. Yes. And you were discussing previously with the other pictures uh, a different part of the closed-in area. That's correct. Now, this represents contact? Another contact. So, would this mean that there's contact in one part of the closed-in area, and then other contact in the other parts of the closed-in area? Yes. And would the blood stain pattern reflected in the photograph 108, would that be consistent with the source or sources being upright. This particular column, which means a blood source have to have a direct contact with a movement, because we see smear, not a definitive path with movement. So is this hot? We say it lists the source of the contact this hot of the column. With movement. With a movement. Now, I'd like to turn your attention to the photograph in the middle of the bottom row. Yes. Could you describe that for us? What this that represents? This appear to be a close-up photo showing this plan. And uh, we said focus in some key like material. Now, when you say this plant, you're indicating a plant that is close to the walkway and the front gate area. Yes. And the middle photograph on the bottom row, you say, is uh, keys. Here, this location appear to be have a set of key. This depicts one of the boots of Mr. Goldman. Your Honor, I'd like to mark a photograph as 1341B. 
which is a photograph of the key. And I'd like to put that in the envelope and display it to the jury. Could, uh, this is Robertson. Appears to be a uh, Quick set type key. Yes. Uh, could we go in even tighter on the key itself? What do you notice about the key, Dr. Lee? This appeared to be exposed, uh, a setup key with a one key, the majority of the key sticking out can be visible, that key. On the key, we see some reddish stand. Another reddish stand. This area. More stand. There are multiple area appear to be have reddish color stand. Your Honor, this is objectionable because there's no evidence that he saw the keys themselves. Oh. Now, Dr. Lee, have you, were the keys available to you for inspection? No. Could those reddish stains be consistent Sorry, with blood? Make a motion to strike. There's no foundation for that. Sustain. All right, I'd ask that uh, we print this photograph and would make that. Uh, 1341C. <laughs> Dr. Lee, is there anything else about uh, blood stain patterns or your observations of uh, this key photograph? Direct above the key, some white color object also have multiple. area have some reddish stain. All right, Your Honor, maybe what I ought to do is have this, instead, instead of the last printout being 1341C, we should make the one printout here of 1341C that with where- the, With the additional arrow the regarding additional the white arrow. object. Correct. Okay. That'll be substituted. Now, before we leave the Elmo, I'd like to show you a photograph that I asked to be marked as 1341D. That I believe is the same photograph as the one on the left hand side uh, showing the beeper in the middle row of the uh, board entitled Bloodstains from Closed in Area at Bundy. Now, Dr. Lee. Did you observe in the, this photograph any, anything with respect to the soil? Yes. What did you observe? I see some indentation. 
impression. Well, clear. Dr. Lee, could you please uh, uh, direct uh, Mr. Harris in terms of uh, focus? Excellent. Excellent. Here? Yeah. Okay. Could you please, uh, with the use of the telestrator, um, illustrate what you mean by the impressions? All right. And this is the photograph that is the uh, middle photograph, first column, on uh, 1341. And what is that that you've indicated, Dr. Lee? In this area appear to be a depression on the ground. Appear to be a large indentation in this area with some loose soil. Would this be consistent with uh, a struggle and people digging out that area? No foundation speculation. Sustained. Well, Detective Lang testified in this case that overall he's an expert he can be asked about other people's testimony detective lang testified that the this dugout area of dirt in this uh, was consistent with uh, mr goldman struggling with someone and in that struggle the dirt being dug out that mistakes the testimony you're on overall what is your judgment of that? Uh, it still calls for speculation. Oral. If he say that, that consistently, I have no additional opinion. Now, <coughs> turning to, is there anything else that of interest in uh, this photograph with respect to impressions or bloodstains that we should notice? Yes. What have you? In this area, I see a impression. That impression is in this area. This area. Is that impression consistent with a shoe print? It could be a shoe print. All right. Is that the kind of uh, impression that can be uh, preserved, document, and cast? Yes. All right. I'd ask that uh, this be printed out. All right. Uh, in this case. And at that time, did you uh, contact anyone in the Los Angeles Police Department or the SID about uh, contributing your services uh, in the investigation? Not relevant. No. Sustained. Well, did you ask uh, for an opportunity uh, to have access to uh, evidence uh, as it was being tested? by anybody at the uh, SID and to participate in that process? Not relevant, Your Honor. Overruled. Uh, I did call uh, LAPD laboratory. I know some uh, scientists there were good friends. And uh, I did call the lab director, Michelle Kessler, but she was busy. We talked briefly. And uh, subsequently, she asked me to talk to uh, Greg Matheson. And did you speak to him? Yes, he is a very nice gentleman and a uh, good scientist. I talked to him, but uh, I know his uh, uh, concern and reservation. He, uh, we had a brief discussion. Basically, I have to through the attorneys. At this time, it calls for right. Well, let's with, move on. Without telling us the content of the communication, um, 
were you directed to go through the attorneys in terms of your offer and desire to uh, get access Paul's, to the information? Paul's per se, and it's also the right. state. Now, with respect to policies in your own laboratory concerning defense experts, uh, when you were working uh, with the prosecution in investigating evidence as it comes in in a case, what is your policy? Objection, irrelevant, same objection. Sustained. We discuss this at a, uh, another time. It's not likely. Proceed, Dr. Lee. <clears throat> do you have a regular fee for consultations? Yes. What is it? Uh, I have a regular fee. Basically, say three hundred dollars per hour. My service. All right. And did you charge a regular fee in this case? No. Uh, what do you re are you receiving any money personally for your, the work you did in this case? Only reimburse my traveling expenses. Was there uh, is there other money that is being uh, given by uh, Mr. Simpson uh, for other purposes? Yes. Uh, request a donation. Oh, well. I request in lieu uh, the consultation fee, uh, half of the uh, consultation fee donate to. Overruled. Where the compensation is going? Overruled. Half of the con uh, half of the compensation goes to University of New Haven, have a scholarship fund for law enforcement officer workshops or young students want to major forensic science. The other half goes to the Department of Public Safety for the training or uh, equipment or uh, laboratory services. Now, and how much money uh, uh, to this point has been donated to uh, uh, these two, the, the University of Con New Haven and the Connecticut Police Lab? Uh, approximately, I don't remember exactly. The check just go direct. Uh, I just sign it. I don't want to look at it. Just go to the university. Approximately to twenty-five thousand uh, each institution. Now, what were you asked to do uh, in terms of uh, this case for the defense? What tasks were you asked to uh, perform? What areas? Uh, basically, involving review some physical evidence and uh, exam study the crime scene and crime scene pictures, photographs. Try to find the scientific fact what involves.